From the studios of the West Coast Funny Car Factory, these are the Nitro Reports for July 2020. Brought to you by Good Vibrations Motorsports with blowers, safety equipment, and fuel systems sold worldwide at dragparts.com. Aeromotive Fuel Systems, serious fuel systems for racing or muscle cars at aeromotiveinc.com. Stith Printing and Legends of Nitro for branding, screen printing, and embroidery at stithprinting.com. Hot Probes, a racer-to-racer company with reliable exhaust gas temperature sensors for your race engine at hotprobes.com. And Race Pack Data Systems with data loggers for your race car and digital dashboards for the street at racepack.com. Tonight's guests are Mellow Yellow Rookie Funny Car Owner Alex Miladinovich, news on the Boise Night Fires and UNFC, and Randy Winkle with his new Double B and AFX Funny Car Class. And me, I'm Bruce Barker. Now, with the Nitro Reports are Donnie Couch and Dar Hawthorne. Hey, Donnie Couch here for the July Nitro Reports. We're in Orange, California with superstar funny car driver Alex Milanovic, fresh from your indie debut down there. How'd it go down there? We had a great trip. Real happy to be there. The first indie race, the E3 Nationals, we qualified for, uh, 13th. We faced off against J.R. Todd in the first round, and he smoked the tires, and we kind of had some motor damage. The thing ran to half track on nitro and the finish line on aluminum, so had some issues there, and the safety kicked off. And then the second race, we qualified 16th, and um, we, we ran Tasca, and of course, he was running four second runs all weekend, and... Uh, came up short but we had a great time that sacred ground and it was truly an honor to be there well it's kind of sacred ground here in orange at your house you built this car in the garage everything with all your friends and family and uh, it's just a great story Alex you go out there started off at Pomona the Winter Nationals had that great uh, finish line interview down there and you became a instant fan favorite and uh, they love you out there yeah, the Fox was really good to us, and you know, you think about your whole life of what would you do, what would you say when you when that happens, and you get out there and you're standing at Amanda, and then she says the key words, and then you, you get it's like you're choking, you can't even talk, and I, I promised myself I would never do that, and yeah, it was really emotional in the hours that were spent in this garage. I mean, I built my nostalgia car here, I built my second front engine dragster here, and then this this is number four in the chassis in our chassis department and uh, the in-house chassis and again you know the history between me and funny cars with Pluger and all and uh, just to build a car true to his form that was a really proud moment everyone here that's in the backyard hanging out with us right now has clocked in a lot of hours and it was it just been awesome need to put on the back of the car get by with a little help from my friends right exactly exactly and uh I just wish I had one of those P&P fabrication stickers I could slap on the back to ode to my buddy. Yeah, we miss Steve Pluger. I have his German Shepherd at home, so I see that memory every day. Miley, what do you think your dad is? A real famous funny car driver now. Uh, I think it's really cool because we, he's always doing podcasts when I come home. <laughs> he's done a lot of podcasts. Do you tell everybody at school your dad drives a funny car? Yes. And do you tell them you're going to drive it one day? Maybe. Maybe. How's that? Maybe. I got her a junior dragster recently. Marcy went away uh, to Mammoth. They went skiing and came home right on Valentine's Day. And she goes, you have a dragster in the garage? And so I said, yeah, we're going to have her, you know, I'm not going to push it on her. And I'd push her up and down the street. Yeah, and the street. Uh, she goes, Dad, I really don't want to race. And I said, okay, I'm not going to be that parent. Her heart's into music and singing. And uh, so we may have a rock star on our hands. So. Well, that could pay the bills, right? Exactly. Dad may need another drum of nitro when she's on tour with uh, Motley Crue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alex, so we know you ran Funny Car, uh, Nostalgia Funny Car, for many years. Well, how was the transition stepping into this thing for the first time with all that horsepower? Oh, yeah. This car is a handful of hell. You know when you dump the clutch and you grab the brake, it just thumps. Words can't even explain it. Uh, the driving's a little different, you know, not shifting. That's that's the the obvious one, but 
the downforce on these cars, the nostalgia cars don't have the downforce, so they're a little bit more of a handful. But when these things go one to one, and I finally got to have that feeling, it was like the race restarted, and I was like, oh my god, this is why I fell in love with the sport. It was, it was way cool. Love every minute of it. Well, of course, uh, Fox Sports, they really, you know, looked at you quite hard, said a lot of good things about you. But it's probably nice. A lot of your peers out there have been helping you guys out and volunteering to information or parts or anything. That's got to be a good feeling. Oh, it was awesome. When we were licensing, we had the Worsham team helping us out. And I'm still a huge drag race fan. And hanging out with Nikki Bonifonte, Del Worsham, going to these shops, Chad Head's coming over and uh, we're buying parts off of them the Schumacher guys they everyone's been really good to us everyone out there has parts and the one with well, the one cool thing is Jim Dunn always makes sure I owe him money when I leave his shop he's been <laughs> really good to me he's my old buddy and it, it's awesome and the one funny story for Indy uh, Dencham gave us some headers he says hey I'm clearing out the shop he called me when we got to Indy. He goes, don't run those headers. Those are my spares. I gave you the wrong ones. <laughs> so I got to return Dentrum a set of headers that he loaned us. So. Well, maybe you can copy them or something. I'm sure there's a good angle on them, right? Yeah. I'm not sure if I have enough macho for set for the, the laid-back headers yet. But. <laughs> That's quite a challenge I hear from the drivers. Yeah. It takes away the downforce of the front end. So what's next for you, Alex? Well, the goal is the U.S. Nationals. Uh, we came home. We all the teams offered us offered for us to leave the truck and trailer there there's a lot of maintenance we need to do we're going to go through and refinite our our clutch program we got to clean everything and just do the service but hopefully i'm going to go chase money and uh, because of the fox coverage they've been really good to our sponsors and we're moving the needle on on their business end and it's been helpful so the goal is the u.s nationals go indy all the way well, of course, you got that big truck and trailer, so it makes the trip easier for the guys, and you can haul a lot of parts to and from the track, and uh, you're just having a blast. Of course, all your friends are here. Dar, say hi to everybody and let them know. This is a regular crowd. Of course, we were down here for the uh, the National Day at Nitro, and you, I think you had a couple hundred people here. They were even on the roof when you fired the car, so you always have a good crowd here. Yeah, the Milodinovichs know how to party in Orange, and um, fortunately we got a party reputation, trying to professional up a little bit. National Day at Nitro was the greatest thing ever. We were able to raise some money for draw, and uh, Kevin Stith and Blake Bowser did a really great job, and that was really fun. It's, it's what we needed. I think everybody needed a dose of whack the throttle, and um, that was a great spectacle, and I'm always down for a good time. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been around this all my life. When you hit the throttle on that car that day, I thought it was coming off the jack stands, my friend. It probably did. Rob's like, the car moved three inches, and I said, I don't know if we should be doing that anymore. I'm like, well, hell yeah, we have to do it. Scott Palmer's doing it, Worsham, so we're trying to bring back Whack on the Throttle, and they got the whole clutch set up to where we can do it, and it'll be just right, and it'll save us some time for the service. Yeah, well... That's all fun and dandy, but we'll have that uh, National Day of Nitro next year, right, Dar? Yeah, that's right here. Yeah, and it's going to be called the International Day of Nitro because yeah. it was in England and Australia, Australia and, of course, Orange. Yeah, Orange. Right. Can, oh, Worsham put Orange on the map, and I'm, I'm just... going to carry it on? Yeah, you know, McEwen had a shop down the street here. You yeah. were part of that yeah. whole crowd, and... This Genovese's is right down the street. The That's my hangout. Yep, exactly. It was cool. Down the street, the, the amount of racing that was here growing up, I'd see Tom Prock and Mike Cool at breakfast. And uh, we go to the, all the restaurants, the ponchos and orange. We Again, there'd be Robert Height having dinner. And you, you just see everybody. It's a, it's a hub. It's like Indy West, you know. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun, and uh, you got a great group here, and uh, you're doing it right, my friend. You're having fun, and uh, you know that you can't go out there and kick Schumacher's butt yet, but you're knocking on the door out there, and you're a fan favorite, and we wish you the best at the U.S. Nationals. Yep, thank you. Uh, you know, Vince Neal said once that everybody wants to be a musician, but you got to be a rock star to be different. I can't beat those guys financially, so I figured what I could at least do is just go out and you know, put the fu back in fun yeah there you go well you're having a lot of fun and it shows on your interviews and keep it up my friend i'm donnie couch he's alex milinovich 
and Miley. Hi. <laughs> and we're in Orange, California, and I think it's time for a cocktail or a beer or something, right? It's happy hour in Orange, folks. Come on, let's hear some noise. Yeah. 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 Good Vibrations Motorsports specializes in the parts you need for gas, alcohol, and nitro engines. If you're muscling a funny car or top fueler down the quarter mile, cutting a rooster tail across the lake, or cruising the boulevard, Good Vibrations has the blower and fuel system solutions for your personal ride and race car. If you want to go fast, really fast, then Good Vibrations Motorsports is ready to hear from you at goodvibesracing.com. Hot Probe's exhaust gas temperature sensors, used by nitro racers and professional teams like the 2018 U.S. Nationals winner Terry McMillan in his Amelie Top Fuel Dragster. Hotprobes.com. Reliability for the winning edge. And we're back. Uh, just wanted to mention a couple of things that uh, I was talking to Kevin Stith at Stith Printing, one of our awesome advertisers and the guy who does our, just going to get it for you here, our Nitro Report shirts. And uh, we're giving five of them away this time, so send me a personal message, PM on, uh, on Facebook. And if you're one of the first five, I will send it to you uh, for free. Um, he's got a new shirt uh, for our, uh, Don Cook's. Damn Yankee, which is a beautiful shirt. I've got a, uh, I'll be including a photo of it here. But uh, that'll be available on uh, the Stith Printing website on Legends of Nitro. And go over there and take a look at uh, some of the stuff. In fact, look at the one, the, the uh, shirt for the West Coast Funny Car Factory. There's uh, a lot of good stuff there. Uh, a lot of shirts that you'll like to wear. And I wear them all the time. Well, they did this one. Stith, see? Um, Anyway, Stith Printing, longtime sponsor of ours on the Nitro Reports. And lots of good stuff to see at Stith Printing and Legends of Nitro and look them up on the, uh, the old internet thing. But uh, it's all set up. And there's a store on there that you can buy just about anything you want in just about any size you want. But look for the uh, West Coast Funny Car Factory shirts, which are available. Let's get back to the show. The command modules worked with Electromotion and NHRA. They incorporated a lot of safeties. One, one of the best things that, that's great about this is you can pick a timing map and a clutch curve and you could program it and you could just right at the, you can be the next pair up and you can change your mind, which the crew chiefs do occasionally. <laughs> just, just download a, the curve that you want and you could hold up to 30 runs worth of timing on there. The safeties are also incorporated in here with the pan pressure, so if you melt a piston, um, it really saves you. And it is really for oil downs, but for a guy like me... Further damage. Further damage, yeah. When we ran J.R. Todd, number two cylinder started to eat up. She got pretty hot, about 300 feet out. He smoked the tires, and the car started to make a move, and uh, it started to eat up number two. The pan pressure kicked off, and the throttle broke. and. I'm, I'm kind of torn. There's the cylinder head. I could have torched it, but beating J.R. Todd, that would have been a $2,500 bragging rights. So um, the safety, we got the burst panel. On the setback manifold, they got the two burst panels. That will break the throttle and the parachutes and turn the fuel off. But, but that's, once that, yep. once that breaks the connection here, Yep. It sets the chutes off, turns the fuel off. Yep. And uh, that will, yeah, that that's huge just in case the driver's unconscious or incapacitated. It, it's another safety. Or, or can't drive. Or can't drive, exactly. And uh, you don't want to run out of town about 300 feet. Um, the big cars have the two fuel pumps. This is one of, uh, one of Rage's pumps. The, the nostalgia cars, they of course have the, the mandated 21 gallon pumps and... Now how many gallons is it putting out? That one's 110. Yeah, that thing's a bad mamma jamma. The, um, 
the timing pickups, instead of running the points mag like the nostalgia cars, they got the crank triggers. Now they have two crank triggers. Two, they're one's primary, one's for backup. And they also go off of uh, top dead center. So there's, you can adjust your timing on the computer so you won't need an old school timing light. And the, the all valve is, is a fuel system. They had the slide valve in the old days and Del Worsham and Don Jackson came up with this on the fly and it was, I, I, I couldn't, I could explain it, but I'd probably botch it, but it's like posi traction. It's just magic. It happens. Of course, Don Jackson uh, came up with a lot of developments for these cars and uh, he's a real wizard. He's came up with some uh, fuel system stuff for nostalgia cars and uh, I was first in line as a customer yeah. because I know how smart that guy is. He's a true talent and you know he was a hydraulics engineer. It's just he's keeps it simple and again his his uh, commit what he donated to drag racing was truly amazing. Yep, he uh, revolutionized the clutch and fuel systems yeah. and worked with Bob Brooks and that whole group over yeah. there. Dale we know them, right? Yeah. Dale Armstrong. Yeah, way cool. How do you go wrong with that, right? Exactly. Now what's the difference in the fuel tank? The, the nostalgia cars will burn about, not, I don't know, eight, eight to nine gallons on a run. This is a 20 gallon fuel pump or fuel tank. The big challenge that you have is with the aerodynamics and the real estate on the chassis and the aerodynamics on the body you got to fill it in so this thing comes right up and you can see this one didn't rub on this body but the our our second body had some issues with rubbing and it's a yeah we'll burn about 18 gallons on wait a minute you got a spare body yeah we just <laughs> <laughs> big borrowed steel man this guy's uh, on a roll here dar is it the same manufacturer yes they're both toyotas yeah i had a had a solera the collet I was part of the Coletta outreach program, yeah. and I had a Solera, and that's in Australia now. <laughs> the but, outreach program, yeah. that's a good one. Yep. And uh, we still have the same oil tank. We run the dry sump. It's just the standard uh, five-gallon dry sump system, and uh, it's really good. So if you ever damage uh, the oil pan, spit the rods out. It's only a gallon of oil that will be in your in your belly pan. And the same safeties that are on the nostalgia cars, NHRA, that's always their paramount. They're they're at the finish line, and before you get out of the car, three people have looked inside to see what's happening. And a couple of things, the tech department said, Alex, I need you to fix that, please. And and uh, well, they're all helpful about that. They're not being critical of you. They're just, they've seen it before, and uh, they want to keep you safe. Yeah, absolutely, and the performance is a byproduct of safety. If you're running good, everything else is going to be safe, but right. the things, the front brakes, the, the rear body pins, the airlines for the parachutes, that uh, originally you think, oh, I don't need that stuff, and I've been in deep shit in these yeah, things. It, <laughs> yeah, it needs maintenance every run. you got to have a guy going through all that, and uh takes a lot of guys. How many guys are on your crew, Alex? We got 16 people. I run a heavy crew. <laughs> 16 people. Yeah. Most big teams have nine. Yeah. He's got two bodies for his car and 16 crew guys. It'd be cheaper to pay these guys what I got to cost in whiskey and beer throughout the throughout the years. It would have been, <laughs> been easier to pay them. It was like touring with, with Guns N' Roses, you yeah. know. Um, run a heavy crew because there's always a wedding anniversary or a birthday that the guys have um got crew chief big or big dummies or car chief we got kevin pointer helping out but a, a, a lot of guys it, it it's what it takes and we don't have the true grid of going going rounds but we, we can make up for in in people but i'm just hanging out with my buddies well, you're hanging out and having a good time. Car's going down the track, and uh, again, you're a big fan favorite out there, and that came on pretty quick, only two professional races. Well, three now, right? Yeah. And uh, you're a big fan favorite, and that says a lot about Alex. Yeah, the only thing that will happen is if all the nostalgia guys come to the to the NHRA top field, there will be 32 of them like at the March meet and the hot rod reunion, and I'm tired of staring at Rupert's taillights, Mark Sanders, and... <laughs> It, it's brutal when all those guys come up Jeff Monesey, they're when they're all there if those guys come up the big guys better watch out because there's some true talent out yeah, there. Yeah, there is. In fact, I talked to Jason the other day and he's almost ready with his car and stuff, but with this COVID 
you know, it's putting us all back and keeping cars in the garage and no races and we don't know what's going to happen, but Jason's about ready to step up. I can't wait till he run that car. It's going to be awesome. And that was one of Grant Downing's last chassis, I think, that he made. Yeah. And uh, that they got some great talent over there. And people better watch it when Jason shows up because he knows how to make it happen. There's a lot of talent. Yeah, he's a great driver and uh, seemed to get it done mechanically. And he's got all new parts and stuff. When he acquired that team, it didn't have the best of you know the heads or this and that and he went and got all the right parts for that car and uh he's ready to rumble yeah and i know you are too i'm gonna be nervous when he shows up <laughs> <laughs> all right we're in the uh in your office so to speak alex yeah. tight tight uh nhra mandated two years ago that they wanted foam all throughout the roll cage so they did the not just the 42.1 they wanted the 43 so it's got the fire retardant and the ballistic foam the fresh air system they always had on the nostalgia cars but um, we got the reverse lockout so if you're on the run we had some issues out there we, we saw through the clutch you could put actually put the car in neutral so they can push you off the track they had the one issue 2005 I think it was Melanie Troxel's car restarted. Yeah. And that can happen. These cars will run on oil and they'll diesel on through. So got to disassociate the motor from the drive shaft and the reverser does that. They added the ballistic foam here on the knees. Um, something they came up with. I, forgot, I, I don't know how long it's been, but that, that's a new addition. They changed the cross member. You got to run the two, the two steering cross member. They allow you to bolt it in just to get the clutch out and uh the 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 full safety cage this is something they came about where they want the uh the shroud over the roll cage another add-on but it, again it was something that nhra wanted for safety everything else is the same the the, the driver's upholstery the um the seat insert and um the shield that's around you here yep yeah, on the roll cage yep yeah that's mandatory and we also have the shield that's behind the driver's compartment that's not mandatory but a lot of teams add that and it was just uh it was something that came up and we talked about it and we just said you know what let's just add it for for our safety aspect well the the shield around the roll cage and and behind the seat and everything we saw some tires come apart and those pieces were small and going all through the driver area and you know when that rubber hits you slaps you pretty good so everything's here to protect the driver and uh, it always evolves every year yep knock some sense into you i mean even then just when we lost a blower belt on our on our first run against bob tasca the it, when we lost the belt it didn't damage any of the wiring but it did it put a hickey in the body so it was like God damn one more thing to fix yeah You've always got plenty of work to do on these cars, Alex. Whether it's a blower belt or kicking a rod out, you know that. But you got 16 guys, so you got no excuse. Exactly. Another chain difference on these cars is you you don't have the shifter on the steering wheel. Everything's controlled on the clutch through the magic box that's up front. Um, we got everything disassembled. All we have is a reverser, forward and reverse. Uh, all that's done through the clutch management. So the, the fun thing about this is you just stab it and go, and if you got it pointed straight, you're going, uh, right? you're, there's no choice. Yeah, these cars are like trying to, you know, babysit a two-year-old. They can go wrong really fast. <laughs> but what you spend in tickets for the crew at the March meet or the reunion, you can add to your nitro bill for the, for the big cars. Um, all the parts are the same. We um, the 671 blowers, the LB21s and the 20s that Littlefield makes, they're an amazing blower. You will have uh, you can get a used you know Dempke or D DMP blower. I've got some old John Force blowers from SSI. They are they're amazing. Um, you, you need the volume of parts to to run with the big guys because if something goes wrong, you don't have time to service it. You got to put something new on there. The nitro is the same price. The uh, the hotels, tires. the tires are about the same, and uh, just the parts attrition, just burning it up. It's like it's like having kids. You're just giving money away. <laughs> that means you got to go uh, work a little overtime, huh? 
Exactly. I got to sell more Cortina sandwiches and <laughs> and uh, it's been a good time. Lots of fun. Well, Alex, uh, you know, all your friends and, and family and, and businesses help you out. You want to give them a mention why we got you on camera? Oh, absolutely. Redshirtfriday.com helps us out. Boss Strong Box, they help us out. Redline Oil, of course. Uh, L&N Linens, Versteg Trucking, Cortinas, Industrial Tire. The list goes on. Advanced Surfaces, Pacific Performance, PI Motorsports, Battery Connection. And we got the Nitro Reports in the garage in orange. <laughs> I, I don't think we're paying them, are we, Dar? Oh, we'll have to work that oh, out. Oh, we're paying them in publicity. That's it. That's it. So that's yeah, worth more than anything. And we get beer, too. Yeah, right? Speaking of that, let's go have one. How about you, Alex? It's hot today. Let's have a cold one. All right. Thanks for watching the Nitro Reports. Aeromotive fuel systems on the street, in the water, or at the track. If you can drive it, we can fuel it. Hey, Dar Hawthorne here for the Nitro Reports, and uh, we're back in a studio in a very weird place, but it's a studio. Um, and I got Randy Winkle, who's a guy, if you've been up to Famoso Raceway, you probably see him around. You may not recognize him, but he's got one of the absolute bitchinest Mustangs out there, a, a dark blue killer uh, Mustang from the period that you would have to say is maybe 67, 68 uh, and with with weed burner headers, but Randy's got a new class that uh, I wanted to get everybody to know about because, quite frankly, my son and I are building a car for it. Randy, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Dar? Really good, really good. I'm glad you called. Um, you know, um, when you first started talking about this class, it was like, are you kidding? That's the part of drag racing that I grew up in when. When I, I went to Indy with Jack Chrisman and Bill Shrewsbury with the Saxon Sons Comets, and after coming back from that, it was like I didn't recognize a top fuel dragster. I wasn't interested, and you know, especially cars with doors that were blown. You know, it was like, man, and they're not gassers. They're modern, contemporary for the period. Uh, you know, the kind of cars you'd see on a showroom floor. I think that's bitching. Yeah, you know, and I, I, and really, that's the grassroots of it. That's where it started at, at the dealership. I mean, you know, uh, these early funny cars uh, in the day, they they were, you know, they were built to, to, to look like something you could buy off the lot. And that's mm -hmm. basically what they are. You know, a lot of these cars were backdoor cars from the factory, and uh, uh, you know, they move the wheels forward on them, or or uh, extend the front end, or or you know, whatever it was, make them center steer and move things around, and whatever they thought would get them down the track. The fastest, you know, and and uh, so to me, uh, that is the era of funny car that has been completely overlooked. That sixty four five to sixty nine, you know, there's a there's just so many great changes in there, and and uh, like you said earlier, when we were talking, you could take a flopper body or with an extended front end or altered wheelbase. They all ran together back mm -hmm. then. Yeah, that, that era, and uh, uh, it was a time when people weren't really sure what the right way to go was. And I mean, look at the fuel Cuda. I mean, yeah. you know, that car, just like a you know, guy had a dragster and he, he put a Cuda body on it. I mean, how cool was that? And went out and was successful with it. And, and so what we're trying to do with this thing is, is uh, uh, keep it simple, keep it affordable, fun, make the car beautiful, and, and, and most of all, just, just create a place where you can just let your mind run with your creation. Um, there's, the rules are really laxed, and we can go into some of that. 
but it can be anything from an extended, like I said, extended nose to altered wheelbase in the rear. It can be a, a stock bodied car, uh, as long as it's a center steer. If you don't do any modification to the wheelbase or anything else, it's got to be a center steer style car. Um, uh, getting into the rules a little bit, we're going to limit this thing to a 12 inch wheel, a 12 inch tire, no bead lock wheels. Mm -hmm. The screws in them if you want to. Yep. Um, they'll have to all be either a drop or straight style axle, no A arms. Um, uh, again, it can be a left steer or center steer. Uh, if it's a if it's a flopper, obviously it's going to be a, a center steer. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, other than that, it's, gonna, it's limited to a 500 cubic inch. But you can run a big block, a small block, aluminum head. You can run aluminum blocks. They had them back then. Yeah. Good rule of thumb. Is if it was on the shelf in 1969, you can run it. Okay. But uh, uh, it's going to be an all automatic class unless you have a turbo 400 with a clutch or like a torque flight with a clutch. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's automatic two speed or three speed. No bolt together converters. It's a standard style converter. Um, again, these cars are designed, we want them to run, you know, from like 880s to 780s. You know, we're not trying to move the starting line with these cars. You know, we just, we just want to go out and put on a, a fun show. Um, but we're going to limit them to like a point style mag, like a Vortec or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, no super hot mag, we don't need it. And then getting into like uh, the uh, top end of the motors, uh, you can be blown on on methanol or you can be on gas. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. If you're going to go nitro, you can be injected with nitro or gas or methanol, whatever your choice is. But uh, to get into the nitro end of it, you need to be injected. Um, and then these cars will be, you know, they've got to have period correct wheels. They've got to have period correct paint jobs. Um, you know, we kind of just want to go out and recreate that day and, uh, you know, and, and see the cars come out that never were built. People's ideas, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just a place to do it. Well, it's funny because when, when my son and I used to run a, a 64 Chevy 2 it, uh, in Good Guys, uh, you know, we ran it with uh, with an altered wheelbase in the front. The front wheels were pushed forward like eight inches, and it was all steel. Ran it without a hood, with a big block, with a carburetor on it, and we're running. So what were we running? 11, 1170s at one hundred and seven with an open rear end, and uh, it's like we didn't know any different, and we just had a ball with it. We didn't win any races with it, but we were able to go run a Pomona and you know and and uh, and really have fun with it. And I think that's a really great idea that you're not trying to rotate the earth. I mean, go out there and put on a show and dry hops and 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 burnouts and and really just have a lot of fun. And it's the kind of thing that a father and son can do. Yeah, you know, and and, and I I really I, I think that uh, this is going to be a great thing too. And I. I think the best part of the show is going to be that that first hundred feet. You know, people doing the burnout and the dry ops and <laughs> and all the fun stuff. And 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 that's just what we want to do. It's is is create a place to do that. And it's it's so much about the show. We're never going to be a John Force or anything like that. I mean, you know, I'm not. That's for sure. But man, I tell you what, I can sure go out and recreate the the early days. You know, when it was uh, it was real and affordable. Yeah, and, and and as I remember, one of the things was you never knew what to expect because th you know people like uh, Dale Armstrong, you know, had a, a a transmission blow up, and he cut the roof off of his Chevy two the next week and went right back racing. You yeah. know, <laughs> it's like okay, I, you know, I'm all for that. I'm I I mean I don't I I've read your rules package and I didn't see anything about topless. <laughs> nope, you can be you can be topless for sure. Um, you know, and I'll, uh, let's get into the suspension part real quick. It can be solid mounted. It can be leaf spring. I mean, most a lot of the big majority of those cars were just leaf spring rear end right. or ladder. Rear. There was a few four linkers back in the day and stuff, but uh, uh, no, it's kind of whatever you can create in a garage. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to break the bank to go run this thing. Obviously, on the safety end of it, we have to conform with uh, you know all the NHRA standards, but uh, uh, that's something you have to do. But most of that stuff's uh, covered with metal, so. Where's the, so where's it going to fall in terms of the driver? Is it going to be advanced ET? Well, I, I would think it, uh, I think what advanced ET goes to 750, right? No, yes, I think no. so. Well, we're, what we're doing is we're teching the cars up to 750. We don't okay. want to see them any more than that. Uh, we want to stay, keep it down where we don't need fire models. Uh, Carbon the car fiber. <laughs> We need one parachute. Uh, you know, we don't need B-lock wheels because that's after 200 miles an hour, I think. But uh, uh, 
yeah, no, just just like I said again, keep keep it affordable and, and, and keep it beautiful. You know, uh, make the cars pretty. Put your That's money great. into the, the well, yeah, and You had said uh, now the last time we talked was a couple of weeks ago, but you'd mentioned that you were going to build probably three cars on your own. Is yeah. Still- so what I, thanks for bringing that up. What I'm doing is is uh, uh, I want to want to try to grab one of each. So start out with the Mustang. It was a real funny car back in '66. Uh, you know, uh, ran I believe the, the first funny car race ever, which was called the uh, Super Invitational Funny Car Meet. And uh, uh, from what we found, all the mystery we have on a car, it was at that meet in the day. Uh, so it's it's a real deal from the day. That's that's a long long stretch nose, 18 inches left steer. The next one I'm doing is, uh, you know, I was so first time I ever seen the fuel coot, I thought, man, I got to have one of those. So. I took the old strange brew dragster. A lot of you guys might remember that blue dragster, the trophy no body deal. And uh, the front end, everything was so wore out on that thing. I thought, you know what? Let's whack this thing. We knocked four feet off of it. I put it on a 63 split window stingray body. So it got like a fuel ray now. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's just a, it is. It's just a simple dragster with a, with a fiberglass body stuck on it. And, and honestly, um, I'm keeping note on these cars while I'm spending on them. Mm-hmm. And I do wheeling and dealing and everything, but I'm telling you, we go the way I'm going, you can build a turnkey car for under 30 grand or close to it. Man. So, uh, and these guys that have alters already with, you know, roll cage or, 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 yeah. or a 750 tech car, you've already got all that. Well, then you're just looking at putting the body and the right wheels and everything on it. Right. Uh, you know, keep in mind, it's got to be 120 inches or shorter on the uh, funny car style. But the third one I'm doing is, uh, uh, it's the 65 Nova leaf spring um, i'm going to leave the wheelbase stock but i'm going to make it center steers and mm-hmm. i talked about that if you uh if you leave it a stock wheel length uh, uh wheelbase car and you you're not going to move the wheels forward or back leave it like that it has to be a center steer then okay so we have to we put some modification on it mm-hmm. okay but uh, again um so that'll give me it'll give me uh like i said the dragster style with a body on it it'll give me the stretch nose uh and then it'll be the uh, 65 Nova will be a, I said, a standard uh, uh, wheelbase. And then the fourth one I'm doing is uh, working with Jim Lieberman's son, uh, Little Jim, mm-hmm. and I got the okay from him and, and the rice and everything to uh, recreate Jungle Jim's 66 Nova. Oh, so doing that, I, uh, uh, Glory Days Race Bodies out of Pennsylvania. Uh, Chris over there was kind enough to work with me and uh, we built uh, the recreation of the uh, the Nova, and uh, so things being right, uh, should have it out at the March meet next year, kind of debut it. That's great. Was was that a steel body with doors? <clears throat> there was two of them, and uh, I was torn between one of them is a flopper and it's more of a stock wheel base with a short mm-hmm. bar. The other was a '66 steel car with doors, left steer. But the words will move forward, right. front wheels move forward. So what I did is I took the two and I put them together. I built nice a flopper, but I moved the rear wheels forward, moved the fronts forward, and uh, uh, taken the two and put them together. So we'll have uh, the best of both worlds. Well, that's cool because you know we're. Um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's period correct, but I've got a 350 Donovan small block that uh, that we're going to run injected on alcohol, 14 to one. And uh, you know, it's like I, it, I hope it works because I already got the motor. Yeah, no, I, I, I've already set up front, uh, and, and, and they already had the aluminum motors out there. Yeah. Aluminum heads, aluminum heads, aluminum blocks. They're already out, um, and so yeah, you're absolutely uh, uh, within you know the specs to do that. Great, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And, you know, yeah. Oh, I'll, and Bobby Cottrell is gonna be doing the the roller for us, and. Uh, and all I got to do is wait in line for him to get that, and then you know we'll finish it in our shop. So it, uh, it's got pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. No, you know, and, and my thing is, is I tell you, I think once we get the the first eight or ten cars out there on the starting line, and people will kind of roll up together and do our deal, uh, people are going to get it. The other racers are going to see it and go, wait a minute, these guys are having way more fun than we are. Yeah, we're running an old school tree, we're running heads up, we're putting on the show, we're doing the deal. And those guys with that Southeast Gasser Association, mm-hmm. those guys nailed it on their end, on the Gasser, and they did it. They're having fun. They're doing the right thing. And I hope to make this the West Coast thing. That's uh, cool. Well, this is where it was invented. 
you know, this is where this is where where the whole deal was invented. You know, be, yeah. between people like Landy and and uh, Dale Armstrong and and uh, um, Al Ekstrand and people like that 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 actually started messing around with altered wheelbases and and cutting the top off of a, a Chevy two and things like that. It's like uh, great. Yeah. I'm 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 sure for it. It's sure it's sure yeah. an, an era I remember really well. Yeah, you go back. I wish Mark would turn his phone off. Uh, <laughs> that's my phone. Anyways, uh, 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 yeah, it, it, uh, like it's like some of Randy Wall's old cars, his yeah. Nova and stuff, you know, how they went through the, the generation. It was an open-top Nova, I believe he had one of them, and it was just crazy. Anything you can come up with, as yeah. long as it looks right, and NHRA uh, will, will sign off on the chassis, hey, man, let your imagination go. Cool. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll definitely stay in touch, and uh, we've got, we've got some more shows between now and the end of the year, and certainly before the March meet. God knows uh, uh, we have a March meet. You know, it's like yeah, this yeah, is a very exactly. weird time. Yeah, and we're gonna try to have a uh, uh, we're gonna try to have that Corvette out here for the hot rod reunion. We're just finishing up some body mounts, some sheet metal, and mm-hmm. everything. So uh, let everybody get a little shot of that. It, it's it's a pretty neat deal. Cool. Well, send me oh. photos and. Uh, and uh, we will uh, keep in touch, and, and I'll, okay. I'll, 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 I don't know if ours is going to be ready for the March meet, but we're you know we're headed down that direction. It's already, I mean, yeah, we, yeah. It, the car's already stripped and firewalls out of it, and there's a box chassis set there on on jack stands. But you yeah. know, I want Bobby to do the next step because he knows how to build safe race cars. Right, right. Yeah. It, 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 another thing too is, is if anybody wants to talk about this, feel free to give them my phone number. You I got will. it. I, I will put it on the uh, screen. Yeah, perfect. And then I'm going to thank Mark Dawson for coming down here and, and putting up with me. Yeah, you're in the uh, Tower of Famoso. Yeah, we're in the Tower of Famoso. We're doing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot, lot going on here today. <laughs> it's just hot. And you what? You got what? Then they got West Coast Hot Rods this weekend at, uh, at Famoso? Yeah, I think the night deal starts at 8 o'clock or something. Yeah. Yeah, Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, Friday and Saturday. Great show. Great show. I love yeah. that show. Well, cool. Thank, thank you very much, Randy. I really appreciate you calling, and uh, you know we will see you down the road. But I think it's a great idea, and and I want yeah. to do whatever I can to publicize it. I can't wait to line up next to you. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> All right, buddy. Blow your Bye-bye. doors off. <laughs> we'll get back. Well, let's go to a commercial message now, and uh, we will uh, get back with um, some more information on what's going on for the rest of the year. God knows if it's drag racing. You know, hard to tell. No car shows, no drag racing. But uh, we'll be back after this message. Stith Printing is your leader in corporate and individual identity marketing with over three decades of delivering the best quality garments for your budget and promotions. At Stith Printing, we offer in-house design, providing strong graphic solutions for any project with fabric screen printing or high-density embroidery. Stith's diverse background and attention to detail gets the job done on time and on budget, then ships the job to your door. Whether you field an international racing team, a statewide construction company, a local softball team in a church league, or the convenience store down the street, Stith Printing has the crew to deliver your next printing and branding project. And we're back. Don't forget to uh, go to dragparts.com and order your uh, awesome catalog from Good Vibrations Motorsports. It's got everything that you need to build your car. In fact, to build your car, uh, you know, correctly. And lots of good tech to support there. And, and uh, just about every manufacturer from uh, uh, Enderly and Aeromotive, uh, DJ Safety, um, the blower shop, lots of things that uh, you're going to need to build your race car or your hot rod. It's uh, goodvibesracing.com. And uh, dragparts.com for the new catalog. So I got one other thing here. We got some of these Nitro Report shirts. Uh, I'm going to be taking a case of them up to Boise, up to the Nightfire Nationals, coming up next week, and um, throwing them into the grandstands. And Nitro Reports is uh, giving a $500 uh, bonus to the fastest car there in the fuel category, which will be Funny Car or Top Fuel at uh, the Night Fires at uh, Firebird Raceway in Boise. And I just wanted to go through some of the cars that I have heard and believe will be there. Uh, funny car, Jeff Arend. 
course, Bobby Cottrell in uh, the Austin and O'Brien uh, Good Northwest hitter. Jeff Aranda's in uh, Don Nelson's California Hustler. Uh, Cecil Matthews will be there. And um, at this event, it'll be driven by a guy named uh, Chris Crable that we've had on the show a bunch of times. But... Uh, you know, that's the car that won the March meet, as I remember, with uh, Matt Bynum driving it. Uh, I talked to Tony Gerardo this morning. He's got enough crew guys that he's going to be coming. Uh, Billy Morris will be there with the uh, Problem Child, uh, with with Eddie Knox and the whole band. Uh, Michael Peck will be there with his Camaro. Uh, Jim Broom. Um, don't know who's driving for Jim uh, at, the, at this particular event. Mike Allstead is driven, uh, and Jim Maroney's driven, but there's might be a conflict with the Indy race also this, this weekend. Uh, Wally Giovi and the G-Men, which when they took last year off, that car was hauling ass and, and going around, so uh, it'd be great to see Wally back. Uh, Keith, Keith Clark and, uh, and Jeff Moniz in the Quarter Pounder will be there, and Chris Davis in the Old School Nitro which is, uh, you know, another one of those cars that's really sort of got their stuff together. It's really great to, to see this many funny cars. Uh, again, you know, it looks like 10, 11, 12 cars, which should make for a great show at Boise. Not sure how they're going to handle the seating or anything like that, but once again, for Top Fuel and Funny Car, Nitro Reports will be throwing 500 bucks down on the table for the fastest one of either class. Uh, in, in Top Fuel, Pete Wittenberg, Jim Murphy, uh, Tyler Hilton. Love that car. Steve Harwood, Brett Williamson, and Brian Hall. So there's a uh, you know, pretty good six-car field. Um, we'll see how, how, uh, how it goes and who really shows, but um, that should be a hell of a show. And then in Fuel Altered, uh, Dan Hicks, Johnny West. Uh, Johnny's got a really cool car. Robert Winevsky. Uh, and uh, Robert's out of Arizona, and that car is, uh, is thumping. Tom, Pad- Tom Padilla, uh, Randy Bradford. Uh, Sean Van Horn and Jason Pettit will be there with his new car. And you may uh, remember Jason Pettit's dad, Larry, who was the first funny car driver in the fives in Nostalgia Funny Car, in George Doty's um, Crazy Horse. And then I also got a photo for this last weekend when uh, my son and I were down running um, autocross down at Fontana from Rodney Flournoy, who just acquired another fuel altered for George Doty. That means they've got 10 fuel alters and a funny car. And I know they've got a couple of dragster chassis there, so God knows what those guys are thinking of. But if you're in the market for, for a, a fuel altered, fuel altered chassis, motors, heads, whatever, give George Doty a call down at uh, Har- Harley's and Hot Rods down in Inglewood because uh, he sure has got a ton of stuff, but now they just picked up another complete fuel altered from Jim Holtz who I believe has retired. So uh, lots of really good things going on, except for the racing part. We had no racing, <laughs> which is making us crazy. There's a bunch of us leaving on Wednesday morning uh, uh, next week uh, to go up to Boise to caravan up there. I'm going to split off after there and go to Bonneville for, for uh, three or four days and um, you know do some video there. Uh, Bonneville is just like truly like when you step on the salt, like walking out on another planet. Although I have not been to another planet, I have been to another planet in my head. All right. <laughs> so anyway, um, don't forget, too, that uh, we do have the uh, UNFC Southwest Shootout scheduled for September 18th and 19th at Tucson Dragway. I talked to, uh, to Matt DeYoung there, and uh, they are still planning on this race. If, um, if in fact, uh, there isn't a, if there's a problem with pulling off the reunion, this could be one of the big races of the year. It could be one of the only races of the year except for the March meet and, uh, and Boise. So, um, again, September uh, 18th and 19th for United Nitro Funny Cars. And I know we'll have fuel alters there. It's going to depend on what the health department says, uh, you know, for the amount of people that we can bring in. Um, so that's, uh, that's like the catching you up to date. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of action going on, but um, there's a bunch of us headed up to Boise because I would not miss the night fires. Remember that Jeff Arend won last year, and uh, that car thumps up there. Ronnie Swearingen has got an awesome tune-up for that track, for that altitude, for that heat. And, um, you know, it's like um, if I've got to put money on it, and a lot of people know that, that I've got a long relationship with Don Nelson and the California Hustler, but I'm going to put my money on that. I'm going to stop in Vegas on the way up. So again, we're going to go back to some commercials, 
and then we'll get on with uh, what we shot down at uh, Alex Maladinovich's shop house on his uh, Big Show Funny Car, which was a great time. Uh, we will see you um, after the break. Good Vibrations Motorsports specializes in the parts you need for gas, alcohol, and nitro engines. If you're muscling a funny car or top fueler down the quarter mile, cutting a rooster tail across the lake, or cruising the boulevard, Good Vibrations has the blower and fuel system solutions for your personal ride and race car. If you want to go fast, really fast, then Good Vibrations Motorsports is ready to hear from you at goodvibesracing.com. Aeromotive fuel systems on the street, in the water, or at the track. If you can drive it, we can fuel it. Alex, look around your shop. I see a lot of parts and pieces here. I haven't seen too many clutch stacks that big on some of the big teams. I inherited those from Steve Pluger before he passed away. And... Uh those are one-run discs that they cut, and um, he just figured they would be some good burners to go out while we're trying to, you know, cut our teeth and shake down the tune-up. And uh, we're they're on they're on the pile to be ran. I also got some stuff from John Force Racing. I got the super thin floaters. Nice. Uh, keep an eye out for the big teams. They yeah. Sell these when the crew chief change their recipes. The three. The three tricks, uh, the, the crew chiefs will always want to change. Oh, yeah, they're always changing everything, so yeah. you get to stand by. and My crew chief's changing this on me, so these are may have to go to a good home here shortly. <laughs> Anybody out there that wants to build a nostalgia funny car. <laughs> there you go. All the big teams have been really good to me, and I just figured if I could share the love that they've given me to everybody out there, because the cost of the sport, as you know, it's insane and just keep people in the game i love drag racing and to see it flourish with the next generation of drag racers if i can inspire somebody or help someone stay in the game longer because there's a lot of guys you know experiencing the brunt of this that don't have the money yeah, to do it yeah just hand it down and share the love yeah, well, we just wish we'd get through the scope ads so the racers can come out and the fans can come back out in the stands. I want to see the March meet and the Hot Rod reunion packed again, and hopefully the Saturday Night Nitros. Blake, please. please. <laughs> There's a plea out for you, Blake. I want, I want to get redemption from Jeff and the quarter pounder on that 6-0 run. <laughs> He's always looking back. Love it. All right, so that's it for today, folks. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, that's the July episode.